Hey guys, it's me Nina and I'm back with another video this week and I wanted to answer the question, should Christians buy expensive items? So I have been posting videos somewhat regularly now and I will often look at my algorithm and subscribers and views and whatever and it's like really tempting to think that your most successful video is whatever video has the most views, but what's funny is a lot of times videos that you don't think people watch or like at all end up being viewed a lot and these videos that you think are gems end up being like completely like forgotten or like not really seen that much and um, something I noticed recently was I lost like three subscribers right after uploading a video of a haul of things that I bought in London and I wanted to note too that the vlog that I did got less views in the haul but the vlog is so much more interesting you know like I would think you know seeing like what's happening in London like the actual stay and like different things I saw were so much more interesting than just like the items that I bought but regardless um, that video ended up getting more views which is like something I'm working on like not caring so much about the numbers and whatnot because my still my favorite video of all time is um, this video it's entitled um, don't give up it gets better it's my favorite video that I've recorded and it has like a decent amount of views but like it wasn't viewed any more than like my typical video um, but going back to what I originally was talking about or the reason why I mentioned that it just made me realize that some people don't like seeing videos that are haul like and I ended up getting back the same subscribers and like two more after a couple of days passed by or whatever um, but initially like when I first uploaded it and I hear a lot of people who have um, platforms online who will say that when they upload a video like a haul a lot of times they lose subscribers and this is a Christian lifestyle channel so I really wanted to answer this question should Christians have expensive things you know and I have shared a lot more like materialistic things that I have now that I normally don't you know like I had a, a used Burberry trench unboxing I buy things and tell you guys about it you know and honestly it's something that I personally struggle with and something that I have researched and even looked inwardly and I don't personally think there is anything wrong with buying expensive things but what I struggle with is should Christians buy luxury items and that's basically when okay I think it is poor stewardship and I'm gonna explain to you guys what stewardship is because um, this one hair keeps like falling flat and I'm trying to like not have it fall flat so sorry if I'm like you know adjusting and whatnot a lot but um, stewardship is basically how you use the resources that you have you know like we all are given like something I've been believing more and more often is this idea of living happily within the provisions that God has individually given us. And my entire life, I've been someone who loves value. Like I love getting something at a great discount. I love getting a good deal. That's just like a part of who I am. And stewardship always goes to this idea of like you have limited resources, you know, like you only have so much to do whatever, right? And how are you going to steward your resources in the best way possible? And I think that a big mistake that a lot of super frugal people make who may be also believers, um, who are Christian and who want to like use their money better, like one mistake we might make is thinking that if I buy the cheapest thing that I am stewarding my resources better because I'm spending less, you know, I'm spending like the least amount of money possible. But there are so many other like factors to keep in mind as well. And I always think of it like the best example I can think of is a winter jacket because a winter jacket is one of those types of things that you need to work well. You know, like you need a winter jacket that is going to keep you warm. But there are so many, I'm sorry, I keep touching my hair. This will, this will be it. I'll have to tie my hair up for the next video. This will be it. I'm not going to touch anymore. I promise, guys. Okay, I mean. So a winter jacket, I think, is the best example of this because you can buy a really cheap, like, puffer jacket that's supposedly going to keep you warm for, like, 20 bucks. You know, like, you don't need to spend a lot of money on a winter jacket. But trust me when I say, if you live in New York, you are going to be freezing your butt off the entire winter with your cheap jacket. That's just what it is you know like there's technology that goes into the better made winter jackets and make it warmer so 
let's say you buy that winter jacket, it doesn't keep you warm and the materials aren't that great so just you have to buy another one the next season anyway. And not only are you contributing to like you're you're paying money again to buy the product again but you're also contributing to waste. You know, because a big problem is just the amount of waste that we have, like how much waste are we producing, you know? So you're contributing to waste, you weren't that warm, and you're gonna be spending money again on a winter jacket. There are people who buy from companies like Patagonia, or you can buy from, L.L. Bean doesn't do it anymore, but I think North Face still does it, where you have a lifetime warranty. So you can buy a winter jacket that might cost you not 20, but, and even cheap jackets, honestly, I think you at least need to spend at least like 40 or so, but you can buy North Face for 200, or a Patagonia jacket for, I don't know, even though probably more, and you have a lifetime warranty that, for Patagonia in particular, it's ethically made, and you are warm, you know? Like, you spend some money on your product, but it's gonna last you longer. You might even be able to give it to, like, a sibling or a cousin later on if you want to, because the jacket will still be good for pretty much the rest of your life. The only thing is, like, maybe you might get tired of the style, and that's why you end up giving it to someone. So for me, I personally think that it is better stewardship of your money to buy less products that are higher quality. And that's something that I continually am struggling and challenging myself to do. Because if you can buy less things, but they're higher quality, then you're contributing less to waste. You are buying things less often. And you can also, at times, depending on the brands that you support, Okay, now I forgot what I was talking about. Okay, but really like an area that I think is a little bit more confusing is luxury items. So if you don't need that Louis Vuitton suitcase, is there anything wrong with buying it? I don't know. I really like, I don't know. And I know like as a Christian, okay, I think that for me personally, I don't think there's, and this is part of the reason why like I haven't gone forward with, like I, I bought that Burberry trench coat, but it was the cost of like a trench coat that I would buy new from a cheaper brand, so I didn't feel that weird about it. But I have not gone forward with the whole luxury world of like buying Chanel bags and Louis Vuitton bags and whatnot because of this tension that I feel. And I feel like, for you personally, you have to lean in and listen to what the Holy Spirit prompts you personally. Because for one person, like let's say you are making like billions of dollars, a moderate priced handbag for you may be a Louis Vuitton bag, you know? But for me personally, I feel like I can get a similar quality from a different brand and still be okay, you know? So I think personally that there's nothing wrong with it, but you need to listen to your own inner promptings. And maybe later on in my life, I will change my mind. Maybe I will make more money and I, it won't be as big of a deal or as big of a purchase. But um, something I've thought of recently, and I'm gonna link down this blog post. There's this um, guest blog on a blog that I love. It's called The, La the Lux Strategist or Strategist. I never know. I should literally look up what that word says because I do this every time I mention this blog. But I found her through um, my friend Sophie, who has a blog, Sophie with the blog, and I will link her down below too. And I love um, Lux's blog. She does a lot of these like finance related things and um, just like, you can tell like she lives her life really nicely and comfortably, but she's very wise about how she spends her money and like the ways that she chooses to invest in certain things and not other things. And this guest blogger was saying how she worked in a field where you're expected to kind of buy these luxury items. And honestly, if I were in that kind of field, like thank God I'm in teaching, very like humble job, I mean humble, whatever. I mean like you work in a public school with high school students, you know? I think it kind of feels like ironic when you're like, you know, walking around, if you're walking around in like, I don't know, like Louis Vuittons or, who remembers that video where I literally forgot how to say Louis Vuitton? Like I literally like could not remember. But um, I don't know, there's like a bit of irony if you're wearing like, I mean I have pearl earrings, but it's like when you watch um, Freedom, Freedom Writers and she's wearing a pearl necklace and working in this school that's like so poor, you know? Not to say that my school's like so poor, no one has any money or anything, like 
Um, but there's something about like working in a public school and like wearing luxury items, you know? But if you're working in like advertising and you're working with like million dollar clients, maybe that makes more sense. You know, maybe like there is an image and you're expected to dress a certain way. For me, I feel like my students will not respect me more or less if I'm wearing these expensive items, you know, as long as I'm dressed professionally. So, um, she wrote about how she just accumulated like all of these different luxurious items and one day she just went to her apartment that was like super tiny because like she didn't spend any money on her rent, she just spent it all on these items and she felt so weighed down by these items, you know? And I thought about that and I'm like, man, like, I feel like all my life I'm trying to like accumulate things, you know, like I have a checklist, I want a leather armchair, I have my Pinterest wish list, and wanting these things in and of itself are, is not a, it's not bad, but like if I move one day, you know, like am I going to bring this all with me? Can I carry it all? And do I even care for it, you know? And if something happened, like I had a fire or like god forbid something awful happened it would just be gone you know and like i wouldn't be worth any less because i didn't have those items so like why there's almost like a feeling for me of like i'm like incomplete or like i need to i'm not an adult yet until i have an armchair and i have whatever but you could lose those in a second and losing it doesn't make you any less of who you are so why does having it make you more of who you are. And that can be such a dangerous game when you start thinking that your self-worth is in those items and by owning it and that you accomplish something just by virtue of owning something that could so easily be stolen from you or taken. Um, and I don't want to ever feel that feeling of being weighed down by the items that I have, you know? Not, again, that there's anything wrong. I feel like I'm always putting this disclaimer here, but there's nothing wrong in and of owning it. I think it's really when it becomes your heart's desire and like the most important thing to you and your treasure that it becomes something dangerous. And I'm reading The Last Arrow. I forget the name. I think the author's name is Aaron McManus. I'm surprised I remember that. But, um, he basically talks about how he travels a lot and you can always tell seasoned travelers from unseasoned travelers because people who travel often bring less with them. They'll bring a carry-on and maybe something small with them just because you don't need that, especially when you're traveling a lot. And he mentioned this idea of how like he's thought at times, like he's done like huge transfers where his luggage gets lost and he basically has to decide like, am I going to lose my luggage or am I going to miss my flight? And so often like he's lost his luggage before and he realizes like who cares you know like i can buy another thing or i can buy a new item if i lost my luggage i'll be fine you know these items aren't that important to me so that's kind of like a challenge i have for myself personally and i have for you if you're watching this video there's nothing wrong with investing in items and paying more for something that will be a better use of your resources but i would be wary of anything that you would be like mortified if you lost you know like i think of kim kardashian she was engaged to this guy like a white guy and she lost her earring in the sea and she was freaking out and people made fun of her like oh my gosh this girl like screaming over her earring crying whatever but that earring was like a couple million dollars or something like that and i was thinking if i was kim kardashian i would be crying too like would you not be crying if you lost 2.3 million dollars or something insane like that but Let's not put ourselves into a situation where something is so expensive that if we lost that thing, we would be crying, you know? Because at the end of the day, everything we have can be lost or taken and we cannot bring it with us to heaven. So yes, we should steward and use our resources well while we're here on earth, but never put too much value into whatever that item is for you. And maybe for you that means like buying that super luxurious item is within your budget and it isn't something that you will covet or love too much and that's fine for you and maybe you're like me and you're still growing and struggling and you're not and it's your decision you're not ready to buy that kind of thing because I'm always wary of my heart and where I am at and I always want to be making the right decisions and if you're not ready yet you're just not ready you know or maybe it's just something you personally don't want to do so yeah, that's it. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed. I, I'm always so wary of putting these videos online because my opinions change. I made a video about a tattoo and I feel like now I'm more okay with it. Maybe I'm going to get a tattoo. I don't know. But 
I always put the disclaimer out there, like I am sharing my opinions with you at the moment that I am recording this, you know, like I'm a human being, I changed, not that anyone is like coming at me, like no one's coming at me, but I feel like I should put that out there because sometimes I watch other people's videos and feel like um, if they change their mind later on, it's like kind of hypocritical, but people are human beings, they change, and just because I say something doesn't mean you shouldn't do it, like it's all you personally and how God and the Holy Spirit speaks to you. See ya. Bye guys.